Hi, uh, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. If you've seen, I haven't seen this show before. My name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. But the show is really about my friends Frank and Mary, whom I often talk about and whose goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Nantucket, that means right here. They don't want to go to the mainland. They, God knows, don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. They want to stay right here. So my co-host, it seems like everybody knows, is Allison Forsgren, who has these great guests always. But today, two very timely ones. Allison, whom do we have? Today's show, we have Nancy Holmes, who is the um, town clerk for Nantucket County, and Sarah Alger, well-loved attorney and town moderator for decades. Um, so welcome and thank you guys for coming on the show. We really, really appreciate it. And look, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Is, is every town moderator inevitably in their umpteenth year? Have you, do you just start off by, because I know so many town moderators and they just, they get, they love it and everybody loves them and they stay forever. I think that's true. There seems to be a, a history of that across the board in Massachusetts anyway, where you get a moderator, if they do a good job, you hang on to them for a while. Is there a town moderators association where they kind of reminisce about like worst things that happened at town meeting, you know? Yeah, there actually is the Mass Moderators Association. Oh, that's great. They have um, regional meetings and then they have the annual meetings. Um, the last one I went to was at Sturbridge. They did a mock town meeting from oh. the 1800s. It was, it's fun. It's great to get together and kind of commiserate about, you know, worst behavior you've ever seen. Or... <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's going to be a great. So, so, sorry, I digress, but I was just I was curious about. It. But so are you going to ask your favorite question, Arthur? So my, it, you know, and as I told people beforehand, so Sarah, I, you know, I, I always ask, so, how, you know, how did you end up here? Right. But, but if you're in your umpteenth year, you, you may you may you may be you're one of those real long time people who didn't just come to the go to the beach and never, couldn't leave. You know, I came to me and took it on a bet in um, 1983, when the person who I was dating, who I'm still married to for some reason, um, <laughs> that means that I couldn't get a job on one of the islands. So I did, and then I ended up taking it and coming and staying. And who knew the job was town moderator and you've been <laughs> like here ever since, that's I great. didn't come to be town moderator. <laughs> I became town moderator not until 1987. I got it. I got Four it. years. And so, and so what was your first job, Sarah? What did you come to do? I came as a lawyer. Oh, you did? Yeah, I came as a lawyer. Um, I came right out of law school. I came before graduation in 1983, in May of 1983. And wow. I've been here ever since. Excellent. Well, and, and, and you've been town moderator since 87? 97. Not 97. So let's do the math on that. I'm not... A few years. 24 years, right? Wow. Wow. Yeah, Congratulations. Um, and, and Nancy, I think you've already told us or told Arthur on one of your previous visits, but give us a, just a quickie and then we'll get into the show. Yeah, I think I did on a previous visit and I just found out something about Sarah that she came on a bet. So I think that's pretty fun. Um, I, my father and his siblings, my father grew up in Boston and they worked here as teenagers from the time he was 15 till he got married and various jobs. And he always wanted to come back. So he didn't get to come back until 1968 when he had a wife and seven children, one of whom was me. So um, we started coming summers after that. Um, my father built a little house that we called our summer cottage and we came summers all through school and high school and college and all of that. And I met my husband here who is um, who grew up on the island and had family here as well. And so we moved back in the 90s with our own kids. And here you are. After living overseas for a while. Yep, here we are. <laughs> hey. um, so Nancy, can you go over some of the specifics? We had Libby on last week, but there are some big changes for town meeting this year and it would be, and if you could go over some of the things that you think are most important for people to know, it's gonna be a long day and a lot of things. Yeah. 
you know, sure. To- yeah, I'd love to be able to give some of the, the logistics and the layout of what's going to happen at the annual town meeting this year. And I didn't see Libby last week, so I, you know, I may possibly repeat some of that, but I think it probably can't be heard too many times. So town meeting, as as most people know, is Saturday, June 5th. And it's going to be at the Bacchus playing fields on Bacchus Lane, which is adjacent to the elementary and the middle schools off of Surfside Road. It starts at 9 a.m. on Saturday, June 5th. And should it happen to be really, really inclement weather and really rainy, I'm sure that would be announced, but the rain date would be Sunday, the 6th at the same time, 9 a.m. So Saturday, June 5th, uh, when you arrive, there's going to be um, several large tents set up in the Bacchus field, and there'll be chairs under those tents for the voters. And should you come in and you want to drop off somebody in your car, you know, a a person or two, you will be entering Bacchus Lane through an, uh, an opening, sort of a gate in the fence on Bacchus Lane. So you're welcome to drop people off there. But the parking will be at the Nantucket Public Schools, starting with the elementary and the intermediate school and then moving on to the high school. There'll be um, a police and volunteer election workers presence to help with the parking. But the parking will be similar to what it is in other town meetings, except you'd normally be starting at the high school. This time, obviously, we'll start at the lots closer to the schools. And when those fill up, We'll move out to the high school. Um, There has been a a parking plan established by the police department, and there are going to be some handicap spots reserved adjacent to the field so that anybody um, who needs to park in a handicap spot won't have to go far. Uh, When you go into the field, you're going to see some tables set up under a tent that will be the check-in station, like we would normally have at town meeting, except that if you weren't there last year, last year was our first introduction of electronic voting at town meeting with handheld tabulating devices. So when you go, you're gonna check in as you normally would with one of our you know, familiar faced election workers probably. You don't have to go alphabetically anymore. You can go to any person. You will uh, give your name as a voter and they'll check you in and they will hand you one of these devices and you'll be asked to sit in a certain section that matches a color code on your device. You'll be directed where to go. Um, And just as a a brief aside on the devices, they are um, very simple to use. They are on a virtual private network. None of this is shared out into the world. Your vote is not tied to you, to your name. It is not saved after the vote. And the displays will be um, on, a, on a, um, an electronic device at the front of the town meeting, but also, of course, announced what the vote is. So many yeses, so many noes. Um, what we'll do is, which we did at the last town meeting, which of course there was only about 200 people there in 2020, is that uh, we'll have a run through on how to use the devices. And this will be you know, handled through the, the company that we contract with them for. And they're very professional. This is very well vetted throughout Massachusetts and it's very smooth and people loved it and easy to use. So hopefully um, that will be a good thing. So once you're there and you're in there and you're parked and you're at the town meeting, it's you know, in all likelihood going to be a long day. There'll be a lunch break at some point that Sarah will announce for about 45 minutes. So you wanna make sure that you bring a packed lunch because there'll be no food for sale there. It's on, you know, it's on the school field. So bring a packed lunch, bring enough water for the day. We will have water refill stations available. Bring your warrant. Very importantly, please bring your warrant. There'll be no audio visuals, no screens at this outdoor event. It's an old fashioned style of town meeting. There's, there's also no Wi-Fi at the field. So it's, it's very much going back to basics. So you wanna make sure you bring your lunch, some water, bring your warrant so you can follow along. 
bring a pen or a pencil if you want to write anything down. You can bring a clipboard if you want to, you know, you, the tent will cover you, but there'll be no sides. So you really need to dress for the weather. Um, you know, maybe dress in layers. We know sometimes around here it gets cooler in the afternoon, you know, if it's a nice day, hopefully. And, um, you know, the chairs will be all set up. You don't need to bring a chair. Um, we will yeah, have, well, I have a question. Oh, sure. So um, if you want to sit next to somebody, because at town meeting, everyone has their own seats that they have sat in, you know, mm -hmm. that they've gone to historically. Mm -hmm. um, when you get your, your voting, your calculator voting thing, um, are you color coded as to when you come in? If you want to sit with someone, should you go into the door with them or... I don't understand. You should, you should go into the door with them because it'll fill up section by section. And so, um, you know, you are, because these have a certain, they bring their own virtual private network and, they, and these devices have a certain frequency. And, you know, I'm not an IT genius by any means of the word, but they, they have to be tied to a certain section. You know, first we'll okay. fill up with the red devices. And when those were gone, we'll go on to the green devices. So yeah, if you're coming with a friend or a housemate or a partner, you should probably, if you can, possibly come together. Okay, um, thank you. I also, I'm just trying to think, I, we will have microphones for people to come up to speak to if they wanna to speak to an article or ask a question. There'll be microphones and election workers in each tent. Uh, we have some passable microphones, but basically it will be like it was last year where you go to a standing microphone so that it's cleaned off um, with some sanitizer after each speaker. Um, and there will be a section for non-voters. And there'll be some, we have some chairs there, but we, we don't know how many non-voters are gonna come. So we're, we're asking or recommending that non-voters, if they're going to come, that they bring their own beach chair just in case. And we're also reminding the non-voters that um, they're certainly welcome to come as long as there's enough room, but as they can't speak or vote, if, if they'd rather, they can also watch it. It's, it's live streamed. So they can also watch um, the town meeting. And... We will have porta potties present. We'll have a water refill station, even though we're recommending everybody, you know, try to bring a big, big old bottle of water with you, but we will have a refill station. We'll have hand sanitizing stations in each tent and at the porta potty. And then, you know, lastly, just a reminder again, there, there are no audiovisual screens at this town meeting. We're outside as most of the towns on the Cape and the Islands have done. We will have small, you know, eight and a half by 11 size color copies of the zoning maps. Should people need to, to reference one of those, we're gonna have those available at different tables, but there's not gonna be large screens or big maps. And um, I hope I haven't forgotten anything, but I, I just like to close with the reason that we're doing this outside is that you know, the, the selectmen's warrant for the town meeting is posted, uh, I believe they signed it in late January. And the decision to hold this meeting outside was made in late 2020 based on a lot of factors. Um, and many, many towns in Massachusetts are doing the same. And, you know, for us, those factors were of course, you know, public health and the state of the pandemic at the time, but also the fact that we didn't know when the children were coming, the students were coming back to school and the school was operating on a six foot distancing at that time and they were gonna need every possible space for the students. And we in turn with having to space out voters if we were in there in April, would have had to have been probably in about four spaces which was very much of a technological challenge. So the decision was made uh, to hold the meeting in open air for, for all those reasons. And it's gonna be a different experience for all of us. Um, there's gonna be some, some unknowns and some quirks in there for all of us, but we've worked hard to try to plan it. And you know we do have a big town meeting in Nantucket 
and a lengthy one. So, you know, we're just asking that everybody, you know, be patient and, you know, try to be open-minded about it. Yeah, I mean, I've heard, I've heard a lot about the work that's gone into planning this and who knew that the two, three days before the governor would lift the, a lot of the emergency orders, yeah. but um, no. I look forward to seeing how it works. And um, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about um, people, um, about some of the um, articles that you think are going to be interesting or um, how, and oh, so people, when they want to change an article are supposed to have given to you their materials by what time, if for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So well, yeah, let me run through that a little bit because this year it's gonna be more challenging, I think, than it has been in other years. Um, when an article has received a positive recommendation from the Finance Committee, that motion, that recommendation is in the form of a positive motion in the warrant. So when we go to discuss it, what we discuss is the motion that the Finance Committee has printed and has made. In cases where an article did not receive a positive recommendation from the Finance Committee, there is no motion in the warrant. So if someone wants to bring an article like that forward, <clears throat> they have to actually be responsible for presenting the positive motion. Those motions should be gotten to me as quickly um, as they possibly can be because I need to vet them and make sure that they're within the scope of the article. We can't have a motion that veers too differently than what was published in the warrant. Um, we are going to be a little bit more flexible in terms of motions this year because we're not going to have the screen. Um, it's going to be okay. We've kind of gotten away from this in the past probably five to 10 years, but it's going to be okay to just say, I move that the subject matter of Article 350 be adopted as printed in the warrant. And that's going to be sufficient for a motion. Um, but if your motion is going to make any sort of changes in what was printed in the warrant, then you really should get it to me in writing. And I'm asking also that you provide enough copies so that every person in the audience can have a copy to be looking at. Um, if it's just a question of a word or two, then I can obviously read that in and people will be able to write it down into their, um, into their warrant and know what we're talking about. But if it's anything of any complexity, I think you should be prepared to have it in writing, provide, I don't know, Nancy, what are we saying? At least 600 copies. I hate to think of the, of the tree. Yeah, but that's what, that's what we had suggested, 600 copies. Yeah, so that's what we're unfortunately having to do. I know that one article, they may actually try to do a Q code. Um, I don't know how successful that will be. So that would not everyone will have the ability to, to read a Q code and look at it. We're also not going to have any Wi Fi available. Um, so people will have to be on their data plans if they want to be using their cell phones or computers during the meeting. That's a little different than when we're inside. We've always had Wi Fi available. We won't have that this year. Um, what else aren't we going to have? I feel like this is the meeting where we're really down back back to basics. You know, bring your warrant, bring your pen, bring your patients, your knitting, um, wear layers. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting day, I think. Um, and is there any weather forecast for the for that day so far? What does Farmers Almanac have to say? Farmers Almanac does not say rain. That I know. <laughs> the farm. The Farmer's Almanac says something for the first to the sixth, warm and cool, then sunny. But it doesn't mention the word rain. So I'm going with it. Um, we're even talking the Farmer's Almanac. Now, I know, I know when we were, when we were uh, talking, I'm, I'm just, uh, my, my job um, is, is basically to provide comic relief and check the time. And I'm just watching the time. And I'm looking at, and I'm thinking that we have no around five minutes left, I think. But I know that there was an article that you was refer you folks were referring to earlier, the swimming pool article. 
Is there is there a particular article or articles that you think that that you that you wanted to highlight? Not to express an opinion, obviously. You know, you're not trying to take sides. But but if are there any that people should be kind of ex expecting are going to be the subject of significant controversy? I think if I had to say significant controversy, Article 90 is probably at the at the front of the pack on that, and that's the um, limitation on seasonal rentals. Okay. Um, behind that, I think the housing articles, and I know you had someone on to talk about the housing articles, so I won't um, go into those. And then I think you're right, maybe the swimming pool article, Article 48, which is going to limit the ability of people to have swimming pools in certain zoning districts. I think the R1, SR1, R5, and R5 um, limited districts, unless your lot is a certain um, lot size, I think it has to be over 7,500 square feet and meet certain setback requirements, you would not be able to have a pool. And I think pools have become, they've become very controversial, they've become extremely popular. I can remember when I first moved here, just the idea of having a pool was thought of as ridiculous. And um, people didn't even have cable. I can remember my neighbor being absolutely outraged that the person next to her had, a, had cable TV in their rental. <laughs> um, so we, a lot of things have changed over 38 years. Um, but swimming pools have become a bit of a lightning rod. And I, I think maybe a, a symbol of something that some people have come to think is something maybe. that they don't want for Nantucket. Or, or they really need it on the other On the on other hand, yes. they either absolutely have to have it or they can't imagine why anyone would and it is the decay of all civilization. And, and, and when you say 600 copies for amendments, so you, th th I'm, from that I am inferring that it would not be a surprise to you to have five to six or 600 people show up at this town meeting? Right. I wouldn't be surprised to have over 600 people show up. That's astonishing. That's just... <laughs> that's We've amazing. had meetings that were that big. There was a beach driving article one summer. It was an August meeting. It was unbearably hot in high school. And we had so many people that we filled up the entire auditorium, which I think is 800 and something people. And then we had a couple of hundred people up on the stage with me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it's not unheard of. Yeah, and a couple of years ago for the, not quite that many, but uh, two or three years ago for the uh, marijuana articles, we had, at the beginning of the meeting, we had almost 800 people. It was like 780. Right. So, you know, it's, it's hard. We'll have some extra chairs from the school off to the side. It's it's hard to prepare in this instance because obviously the auditorium has so many seats and we know how many it has. Right. But it, it's a little harder to prepare for this. How many electronic voting modules um, are you bringing? You know, I have to double check, but for our, for our first town meeting last year, even though we scaled it back, they brought a thousand. So I'm sure they will be well prepared with prob probably a thousand. And I was I was really excited about being able to go to my first Nantucket town meeting, right? Except that, of course, I was silly enough to wait to see if I because I don't want to do it in a day, right? Because it's a long meeting. So, of course, to try to get an overnight stay in Nantucket on that Friday and Saturday night, no, no, I've no. I've, 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 I've tried. It was <laughs> it's not good. That's going to be a busy. I, Maybe everyone's just coming for town meeting. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe they're going to be people like, don't come for town meeting because if they if they don't live here, they can't vote. Yeah, well, I, that's true. Well, maybe it's some of them sneak in. Maybe. And so, and so, are you saying, Arthur, that you are not going to be joining us? No, I'm not. No, uh -huh. I'm not. I can't. Get Arthur, I know you might be tempted to sleep under the tent, but you can't. No, but no, but no, I can't do that. <laughs> There's no sides. Well, th this is this has really been wonderful. I know Allison had suggested this show really as a as a because I think that. I think a lot of folks watch this show who are my who are Frank and Mary, you know, who are at home and they are not not real high tech, but they're but they're tuning into NCTV, which I think provides this wonderful service. So um, I think 
for a lot of folks, I think it is really helpful that both of you could be here just to give folks a sense that they should be bringing a lot of water um, and that, and, and, and not and, their pets. And yes. Oh yes. yeah, no pets. That's right, no pets. And no pets, ah, very important and very important. Well, because, you know, in Nantucket, we do love our pets and yeah. people do treat their pets as family members and want to bring their dogs everywhere they go, but yeah. not on this day. It's true. I, I hope it was helpful. And, you know, there's so much information on the website and, you know, we're, we're doing our best to get the word out. And certainly if anybody has any questions, they can call the town clerk's office. It's an evolving situation as the governor lifts some of these restrictions. We may, we may be able to fit more people under the tent than we had originally thought. I, I, this, whole, this whole year and a half has been an evolving situation. I yearn for the days of non-evolving situations. Right? Yeah. So, Allison, thank you so much for doing this. For, 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 invite, for inviting these great guests. Nancy and Sarah, thank you so much thank for coming you. on. Thank you so much. Thank you. you guys. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us. Yep. And See folks, you. I hope you really enjoy your town meeting. This sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Just a lot. Fingers crossed for good weather. Yep. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you all. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much.